let's go through the process now of from start to finish uh, recording a scatter plot related to uh, two variables of information and then use a linear model to make some predictions and interpret that. So the first thing we're going to do is actually watch a video that gives us the data. All right, so notice that throughout that short little video clip, um, the person was adding oranges to the container and the weight in kilograms was listed on the scale. And so what we're gonna do is record that weight. Now, instead of making you go back and, and look at each weight, let's just go ahead and uh, record what I recorded ahead of time. So there were three oranges originally in the crate and the kilogram weight was 1.027. And then when another orange was added, it was 1.162 kilograms. And then it was 1.502 for five. For six, it was 1.617. For seven, it was 1.761. Uh, for eight, it was 2.115. For nine, it was 2.233. And for 10, it was 2.569 kilograms. All right, so what we're gonna do is now create a scatter plot of that data. And remember, scatter plot is essentially just taking the real life data and um, graphing them as points. So. Uh, we have the number of oranges on the x-axis here and the weight in kilograms over on the y-axis and the scale right here is going by a uh, ones on the x-axis and um, one fourth pounds so if you want to write that in that might be helpful so 0.751 one point let's see 1.25 1.5 1.752 2.25 2.753 and 3.25 and 3.75. So if it's possible to write that in, you might have to zoom in to get that detail. Um, but that might be helpful in graphing the points. All right, so let's see if we can actually graph these points. You're gonna have to estimate to a certain degree here. So let's look at three oranges and then 1.027. So that's just a little bit so we go up from three to just a little bit above one, 1.027, 1 not 1.27, but 1.027. So um, you're just gonna do your best estimate of a point, it's all right. Uh, four, 1.16, so not that much more, not up to 1.25 yet, so maybe about right there. Five, 1.502, all right, so that jumps up to about 1.5 here. A uh, six, 1.617, so just a little bit above the last one, but not to 1.75 yet. Uh, seven, 1 1.76, so that one's right about at that 1.75 number. Eight, 2.115, so kind of halfway between the two and the 2.25. And nine, 2.233. And 10, five, uh, let's see, 2.569. All 
right, so it's a little bit above 2.5. So just do your very best you can. It's not going to be absolutely perfect, um, but hopefully you get something that's pretty much like what we see here. I'm just gonna bump that one up just a little bit more. I guess I don't have to be so picky, but there we go. All right, so that's a scatter plot of the data. Number three says, draw a line through the data that fits the data well. All right, so if you have a ruler, if you're using Notability, you should be able to kind of draw a line and it should kind of straighten out for you here. All right, so when we draw a line that divides the data well, all right, this is what a linear model sort of does. And so we wanted to have two, two kind of guidelines. Uh, when you draw the line, you wanna divide the points approximately, I'm just gonna say approx, in half. So we wanna see if we can draw a line that kind of splits those points in half, but we also want to make sure that it follows the overall pattern. So it's not just any line that splits the points in half. You still want it to kind of follow the overall pattern. All right, so since you're doing this with me, I want you to try to make your line essentially the same as mine. So I'm gonna take that top right point, and if you're doing this on your own, you could kind of make it your own as well. But I'm gonna take that top right point, so this one up here, and we're just gonna kind of go down through, see if this will straighten out, there we go. Um, through another one of these points, and I'm going to try to essentially divide the points in half here. So a little bit above, a little bit below. They do follow pretty well, don't they? Um, but there's a couple that are like above the line, and a couple that are like below the line. And so here's what I'd like your points to essentially, or your line essentially do. Um, I want to kind of go through this point and this point. All right, notice we've we've followed the pattern. We've essentially divided the points in half. There's a few that are just slightly below the line. There's a couple that are on the bottom left that are definitely above the line. And if this is just an estimate, okay? So it'll go past this point up here and um, we're just trying to kind of make a line that essentially just kind of follows the overall pattern and divides points in half. But I really would like you guys as much as possible to try to make yours like mine. And so that is go through those two points and so that way we have the same kind of rise and run values when we eventually do the slope which is the next thing that we're going to do all right so we can use this to make some predictions but first we got to get the equation of the line so let's start off with getting the slope of the line all right so what we're going to do to get a slope is you're going to take any two points that are on the line and even if they're not scatter plot points in other words, even if they're not the blue points that we've graphed, if you can find two places that are essentially very easy to look at on the line. And so that's why I kind of wanted to go through these two points, because now what I'm going to do is make a little slope triangle, like a rise over run triangle between these two. Let's see if I can do a little bit better. So I'm going to go over, make a little right triangle, just like this right here. And I'm going to figure out the rise and the run between those two points. But I also have to be pretty careful um, because the scale is not the same on both the x and the y axis. Notice on the x axis we're going by 1s and on the y axis we're going by 0.25. And you don't really see grid squares either. So what I'd like you to do is maybe make a little arrow to this and just write what those two points are. So if you notice that first point that we use is the 6, 1.617. So 6 comma 1.617 is that point. And then this point was the 10, 2.569. So let's just label those points. So when we think about a rise and a run between those two points, remember rise over run is essentially how you estimate the slope. But I also want you to be thinking it, about it more in terms of change in the y divided by the change in the x. Because you won't always have a graph. So if you just kind of think about 
what's the change in the y values? What's the difference in the y values? And what's the difference in between the x values? You can really use that for any situation, whether you have the graph or not. All right, so let's go ahead and, and look at that. So the change in the y would be subtracting the two y values. So I usually take the second one minus the first one, 2.569 minus 1.617. And then the change in the x value is a little nicer, right? 10 and 6, so 10 minus 6. Like most real life data, it's not going to work out to be a perfectly round, nice number. So if we subtract the numerator there, uh, we get 0.952 for the rise. And for the run, we get 10 minus 6, which is 4. All right, so that's not a very nice fraction, of course. Let's just think about what that means. So that means that our run the change in the x was 4 and our rise was 0.952 up on the graph here. And so in this situation, and usually for real life situations, you actually want to divide the two because the fraction isn't always nice. So let's just convert that to a decimal. And so if we do that, that is about 0 0.24, 0.952 divided by 4, 0.24. And so let's just think about what that actually means also. So in the numerator, we we're looking at the, the change in the weight, right? Because the, change in the, uh, the change in the y values was the weight change in kilograms. So weight in kilograms, I'm just going to write that in there, weight in kilograms. And then the x on the x-axis was just the change in the number of oranges. So that is like the oranges. So when we think about dividing the two, and you kind of do this in science too, you kind of divide the labels as well. And so the 0.24 is really 0.24 kilograms per every orange. So that's the change in kilograms per orange. So the weight change per orange. That's an, an, and it's an estimate, right? It's not the exact weight change every single time we added an orange or every time we saw an orange added. It, wasn't, it didn't go up by exactly 0.24 kilograms. But based on our linear model here, we're estimating. We made a line and we did a little slope. So... The value of the slope represents the weight change in kilograms per orange, how much the y changes for every 1x. Okay. So let's answer question number five. Estimate the weight of the box containing 11 oranges. All right, so we went up to 10. What if we added an 11th orange? Then what would it be? All right, well, now we know the weight change per orange. We can estimate that. So notice at 10 oranges, though the weight was what, 2.569. So I'm just gonna say, um, let's bring that down here. And that's approximately, it's approximately 2.57 kilograms. And then now we know that the weight change per orange is about 0.24. So if we added one more orange, we would add another 0.24. Again, just to be clear, this was the 10 oranges right here, at least in our data set. And now we'll add 0.24, because that was our estimate on the slope. So that gets us, if we add those two, what's a 2.81. We add those two, 2.81. So I'm just gonna round that to approximately uh, 2.8 kilograms for 11 oranges then All right so we had 11 oranges right here was one more than what was in our data set all right so do we think that'll be close will this, this estimate be close to the value um it won't be exact um but it should be close based on our estimate. OK. 
Okay. All right, so let's look at the next question. Estimate the weight of the box containing 50 oranges. I guess I'm just going to put this 2.8 um, kilograms up here. That was our estimate for 11. Okay, so for 50 oranges, though, what would that be? Okay, so if we're going up and thinking about 50 oranges, right, that is going to be... 50, for well, 40 more than what we have, right? So up here, if we get up to 50 oranges, that's going to be essentially 40 more than this, right? So if we take the 10 oranges, and again, let's just take that 10 orange number. So 10 oranges. And that 10 orange number was, we said, just like in the last one, 2.57. That was 10 oranges. And then we're going to add 40 more oranges to get up to the 50. And we know that each orange is approximately, remember back in our slope here, that's really what that was telling us is approximately 0.24 pounds. Again, that is an estimate. So we're going to add 40 times 0.24. And that's going to show you the calculations on this one. So let's break out the calculator. So 2.57 kilograms was 10 oranges plus parentheses 0.24 times 40, and that gets us about 12.17, so about 12.2 kilograms. All right, so about 12.2 kilograms. Okay, now that's a lot more oranges, which means that there could be a lot of variability. So will this estimate be close to the actual value? Well, we know it won't be exact, or it's very unlikely to be exact. Since there could be a lot of variability with 40 more oranges, Okay. Um, but it could be still close. I mean, we are estimating here and we are using data to estimate, but that's a little different than when there was 11 oranges. Then we could be relatively close because that's just one more orange than the data set. If we have 50 oranges, that's, that's really what we call extrapolating. Both of these, in fact, let's write down that word. That might come up. Both of these are what we call extrapolations and that is an estimate beyond the data set that we have if you look that up it might not be that exact definition um, but that's how I'm going to describe it so when we talk about an extrapolation I know this is kind of bleeding into the rise over run up here so Let's try to be clear on that. An extrapolation is basically a prediction or an estimate that goes beyond the data set. Notice our data set stops at 10. So we, if we want to know what it is way up here at 50 oranges, way over here at 50, then that's called extrapolating. You're kind of extending the pattern and trying to make a prediction with it. Okay. All right. Estimate the coordinates for the vertical intercept of the line you drew. What does the Y coordinate for this point represent? Okay, so the vertical intercept is just another way of saying the Y intercept. So the vertical line is up and down. So this is the Y intercept. What does the Y coordinate this point represent? So if we think about the Y intercept, really what we're doing here is we're going backwards and we're saying, okay, if there were zero oranges, what the weight be with our estimate? We, 
We could try to extend this down and kind of come up with an estimate too. So it looks like we could do that. Our scale starts at zero on both the X and the Y axis. Um, but let's kind of use our, our previous method, which was if we know that at three oranges, the weight was 1.027. So 1.027. And again, that was our three oranges. Um, then let's just work backwards and subtract three oranges to get down to zero oranges. So let's subtract three oranges. And so we will subtract. Remember, each orange was about 0 0.24 kilograms. So if we subtract three of those, 0 0.24 times three, all right, that should get us zero oranges and what the weight would be at zero oranges. So if we do that 1.027, let's see if I can grab the calculator here. So 1.027 minus parentheses 0.24 times three. Um, that gets us down to about 0 0.307, so about 0 0.31 kilograms. So approximately 0 0.31 kilograms. So what does the Y coordinate for this point? So again, let's, let's just put this up here. So about 0 0.31 kilograms would be what that would be. All right. What does that Y coordinate for this point represent? Well, you might think at first, okay, zero oranges, how could there be any weight? And sometimes estimates aren't going to be perfect when you extrapolate it out on the low side. Um, but I think this really, this could be actually useful information because notice the, the oranges back when we were putting them in were, were in the box, right? So that could be, I don't know if they teared it out um, when you've used those scales in science, but that could be the estimate of the weight of the box. So. So this is the weight of zero oranges, which could be the weight of the empty box. Okay, so it might have meaning that way. It kind of depends on how they use the scale. All right, let's, let's answer a couple more questions that still apply here. Which points are the best fit for your linear model? All right, so best fit basically means which points are basically the closest. Best fit means closest to the line. All right, well, we kind of used a couple of the points that were closest to the line, right? We used these two points that up here and here. So I might just say those two points, but there's obviously a bunch of them that are pretty close to the line. Um, but we made our line go through those two points. So let's let's go ahead and record those. So the points six comma one point six one seven and ten comma two point five six nine were the ones that best fit. They were closest to the line. even on the line. I'm going to say linear model line. Okay. And which points are fit the least well by your linear model? And when you're doing linear models, you're using real life data, and which means that they're not all going to line up perfectly on the line. And so that's why you kind of estimate it. So least well means farthest from the line. So let's go back up and look at that. So it seems like the ones, at least on mine, that are farthest from the line would be the first one and then the third one. So this three, 1.027, and then the five, 1.502. 0, since they are farthest from the line. Okay. So 
from start to finish, we made a linear model. We uh, came up with the slope and the, looked at a y-intercept. We came up with a meaning. We made some predictions with it. Um, some really good math going on here uh, when we're looking at uh, comparing these two variables and making estimates.